Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, we talked about the Trinity, we talked about Jesus supposedly being God, but every single time I would react to a video, of course, Christians would tell me, yeah, well, that guy doesn't know any better, that was not a good explanation, you have to listen to the real preachers, to the real priests and whatnot. And therefore, today, in an attempt to please my Christian viewers, we're going to react to preacher Mari Mari, who went somewhat semi-viral lately on social media. In this video, he will explain why Jesus said, my father is greater than I. So this is, of course, an argument that many Muslims bring forth. If Jesus, the son, is equal to the father, why would he then say that the father is greater than I? That doesn't make sense and goes directly against the whole co-equality argument that is proposed by Trinitarians. But nevertheless, let me not rant for too long. Let's hear what Mari Mari has to say about this subject. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. John 14, 28. Now, I'll, I'll read John 14, 28, where the Lord Jesus says, You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. So yeah. this woman is taking John 14, 8 and saying, you see, That's Jesus Christ is not God because he's saying, my Father is greater than I. So if we are going to believe in the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all equal. Well, there is no equality here because Jesus is saying, my father is greater than I. Yes. Looks like this woman has no idea what the Holy Bible is all about. The Holy Bible or Christianity? About theology. She needs to learn a lot. My goodness. Yeah, it's very funny, of course, because he claims she has to learn a lot. The point of the story is, by reading that passage at face value, it is crystal clear, of course, that the Father is greater than Jesus, because Jesus himself says it here, apparently, allegedly, in the Gospel of John. But no, we're not going to listen to the words of Jesus. We're going to listen to the church fathers 300 years after Jesus Christ at the Council of Nicaea, where they decided it is a trinity after all, and Jesus Christ is the eternally begotten Son from God. God from God, light from light, etc., etc. Jesus Christ himself, however, says clearly that he will return to his Father. Jesus Christ clearly prayed to the Father, asked for forgiveness, asked for his life ultimately. He was begging God in the Bible that the cup will be lifted from him, i.e. the crucifixion, that he will be spared, his life will be spared by God Almighty. This is how Jesus prayed to God. But no, all of that is wrong. Jesus is actually God after all. Very dangerous nowadays. Everybody's a teacher. Sure. It's always good to You're be not. A, a student, a disciple. Don't be a teacher. Let Christ teach you. Humble yourself. But you are teaching and, right now. You say that she she's wrong. And she says that if all three are equal, one cannot be greater than the other one. Yes. My father is greater than I. Well, if the Lord Jesus here says, my father is greater than I, we need to understand who is talking here. Ah, it's just See, a man, Jesus, of course. Totally, is that when you talk about Christ, you are saying Christ is perfect God and perfect man at the same time. Looks like she has forgotten the humanity of Christ. 
She has forgotten the humanity of Christ. So yeah, completely. She Christ is perfect God and perfect man at the same time. There are certain ah, things. Okay, man, but that's a contradiction because even if we suppose that this is true, what you're claiming there, he is fully man and fully God at the same time. Then he cannot claim that God, the Father, is greater than he because he is fully God and fully man at the same time. Why is he swapping roles all the time in the Christian doctrine? Jesus never said that he does it. He never said, yeah, well, guys, I'm fully man and fully God, and I'm just switching personas. Sometimes I'm speaking as the fully man, and sometimes I'm speaking as the fully God. There is, of course, no evidence whatsoever presented from Jesus himself that he did that at all. Even if we would adhere to the Christian doctrine, to the Christian theology, and we would say, yes, it is absolutely accurate. He is fully man, fully God, at the same time, this would imply, of course, that he has metaphysical knowledge of the reality of God, of the reality of the Trinity, of him being the second person of the Godhead. And if Jesus, your God, knows that, then he would, of course, proclaim, me and my father, we are equal. He is not greater than I, but he does the opposite. Christ shows that he is doing him as the man, and there are certain things he is doing him as God himself. Example, example, example. What the example? Lord Jesus saw Jerusalem and cried for Jerusalem. Who cries? The Son of Man. God does not cry, my beloved. The Lord Jesus got hungry. Okay, but there you debunk yourself because you say God doesn't cry, but Jesus cried. Now you're going to say, yeah, well, that was the man, Jesus. But wait a second. Didn't we already clarify that Jesus is the Son of God? So the Son of God within the doctrine of the Trinity is God. That is what it is. The Son is not the Father. The Father is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Son, etc., etc., you name it. So those three persons are not each other, but at the same time, every single person is God, which then implies in turn that Jesus, the Son, is God. God. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights and then he was hungry. Who was hungry? The human side. Divinity never eats. Divinity never hungers. Yeah. The Lord Jesus was thirsty. That's the human side. The Lord Jesus slept. That's the human side. After loophole, man. But then the divine side of Christ, he raised the dead. He healed the sick. But hold on, man. Which divine side of Christ? Which divine side? If Jesus, the Son, is the second person, he is God. And therefore, he is divine, right? Isn't he divine through and through if he is especially fully God? Again, this is another contradiction. He opened the eyes of the blind. He, he cast out demons of people. Here is showing Christ is perfect God and perfect man. Yeah, he seems very confused. Here it shows he's perfect God and perfect man. Okay, how exactly? By performing miracles? Every prophet performed miracles. Moses split the sea. So splitting the sea, from my human perspective here, is a greater miracle than somebody walking on water, right? Splitting the sea is an absolute grandiose miracle. Therefore, by your definition, Moses must be God. Now, when the Lord is Pointless. saying, my father is greater than I, it is the human side of Christ, what talking, does that not mean? the divine. Because humanity is lesser than the divine. The divine created the human side. You see, and this is where Christianity is so perfectly put together. Yeah, we perfectly. never say this man became God, as some claim and attack the Christian faith. All right, so Christianity is perfect because you never claim that man became God. Okay, by that premise, Hellenic mysticism, Greek mysticism, mythology is absolutely perfect because they never claimed that man became God. Ultimately, it was God, Zeus, that had a son, Hercules. So Hercules was half man, half God from the get-go. Zeus was God from the get-go. Therefore, Hellenic mythology is absolutely perfect. They say, how can you say this man became God? That's a blasphemy. Exactly. Christianity never claims this man became God. That's not Christianity the claims what God became man. man. And if you are going to say that God cannot be 
a human, then you have limited God. Don't ever call him almighty. You have stripped him of his rank. He is no longer God. Wow, what an extremely weak argument. So first and foremost, he's creating a strawman, of course, saying some people claim man became God, but we do not say that. We say God became man. Okay, that's not the argument. We are saying it's preposterous that God is man. That's the position. And moreover, the absolutely ridiculous claim that you are limiting God when you say, oh, he cannot become human. Of course, God can do all things. But does that then in turn have to imply that he has to become all things? Then we're in Hinduism. Some Hindus believe that God manifests in rats. You as a Christian are surely against that, right? Why are you? You're limiting God. God is manifesting as rats because he can, of course. Again, God can do all things, but certain things simply do not befit God. It is always the same atheistic argument, right? Hmm. If God is so powerful, so strong, can he create a stone that is too heavy for him to lift? <laughs> it's absurd, of course. God is all powerful and now he's going to create a stone that is too heavy for him to lift. Oh, but if you say that he can, then you're limiting God. God is all powerful. Don't you see the argument? This is so extremely, pathetically weak. If God cannot do anything and everything, then he's not God. Yeah, can God can. be a human? Yes. Can God be a rat? Can a human yes. be God? No. No. <laughs> so that's why the <laughs> human side of Christ says, my father is greater than I. Not the son of God, the son uh -huh. of man. Ah, okay. He's talking here. No, it makes sense. I get so it. So we need to understand how the Holy Bible operates. All right. This is it for today's video. Absolutely pathetic attempt of defending the divinity of Christ by ultimately claiming that Christ was not divine as the Son of Man. He is fully man and fully God at the same time, which then implies, of course, that he has full knowledge of everything as God all the time. But in that moment, he actually chose not to, right? And therefore, he simply tells you, yeah, well, the Father is greater than I. If he truly was God, walking the face of the earth, I mean, think about that, digest it, right? Really think about it. God sends prophets, and we see that in the Torah, for thousands and thousands of years. All of those people received the message from those prophets to worship God alone. And now suddenly God makes 180 and he manifests in the flesh. He incarnates to earth and teaches them, apparently, allegedly, about the Trinity. He's here to teach them that he is the Son of God, the second person of the Godhead. This is what Jesus came for. And now he's there to proclaim this message and teach his disciples. And instead of telling them, listen, guys, I am the Son of God, i.e. God, and me and the Father, we are equal, and all of this is called a trinity. No, he's going to tell them, you know what, guys? The Father is greater than I. How do you make sense out of this? Especially from a Christian perspective, where you believe that God walked the face of the earth. Man, this never happened before and never happened since. The disciples of Christ were in touch with God. And obviously you would then believe that if God revealed himself to humanity, not through prophets this time, but directly, of course you would get the perfect message, right? Everything would be told. Everything, absolutely everything you ever needed to know in your life would be revealed. No, no, absolutely not. Because if we believe Christians... 300 years later, at the Council of Nicaea, this is when 1,800 church fathers had to come together and discuss what actually happened, right? God walked the face of the earth. He said, the Father is greater than I. Yeah, well, we're going to equate then that actually Jesus is God and he is part of the Trinity. The Trinity is a later innovation. It is a man-made concept based upon certain Greek mystical philosophies. Wouldn't you believe, for the Christians watching here, that if God really was amongst you, he would tell you everything you need to know about the nature of God. Why do you need then St. Paul and 1,800 church fathers to tell you something that Jesus Christ, your God, did not tell you? This is absolutely preposterous and makes no sense whatsoever. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, as always, may God, one God, bless you all, much love and peace. Ya nafsu illam tadfari la tajzai
ಆ 